We are just 26 days from those runoff elections in Georgia that will determine which party controls the U.S. Senate. Now, just to remind you, the state has two different runoffs on January 5th. In one race, Democrat Raphael Warnock, he takes on incumbent Republican Kelly Loeffler. The other, Democrat John Ossoff squares off against incumbent Republican David Perdue. Now, as we've been saying, these will be turnout elections. Whichever side gets their base to the polls, they're going to win, especially given how close and how uncertain polling there is. Pick a candidate, you can find a poll that's going to show them leading, albeit by slim margins. So Democrats, they're focused on getting out the vote and getting all their votes counted, but they're also pushing for more access. The state, they've reduced the number of early voting sites since the elections last month. Democrats, they want more places for people to vote. For more on those efforts and other steps that local officials are taking in Georgia, I spoke with Jacqueline Betadapur. She is the chair of the Cobb County, Georgia Democratic Committee. That's a major suburb just to the northwest of Atlanta. Uh, first of all, thanks for a few minutes, Jacqueline. Explain the logic to me on how in the worsening months of the pandemic and January being just about the worst time, you're going to go from 11 polling sites in your county in November to what was down to five. And I now know you guys have effectively gotten them to open up a few more. But why shouldn't it be in the other direction to have as many polling places as possible so you can have mitigation and let people vote freely and fairly? So what we're looking at now, the, um, the reasons that are being given for cutting back, I mean, we all know that it's because they made this last November, they made early voting uh, more readily available than they ever have. Those 11 sites uh, was record breaking in terms of what they've done in the past. And they did that in response to the pandemic and in response to the absolute uh, fiasco that was the June 9th primary. Um, they were uh, extremely embarrassed embarrassed by that, it caught national attention. So they opened up early voting uh, to sort of remediate for all of that. But in so doing, they lost this election. Um, so basically Georgia went blue. Cobb County contributed 57,000 votes to Biden's victory. He won by 14 points in this county. And this is traditionally a Republican county. This is uh, the elections are administered by a Republican administration. So it only makes, uh, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, then yeah, they started to cinch down on early voting, thinking that somehow uh, this would be a parting gift to the Republican Party here in Cobb County. Jacqueline, uh, obviously Georgia is um, the focus of the political universe here for the next uh, 20 some odd days. I'm curious, without Trump at the top of the ticket, um, how do you think that's going to impact what happens in January in the two runoffs? So without uh, Trump at top of ticket, I think uh, the Republicans could have a, uh, a turnout issue. Uh, January 5th is a turnout election. We are expecting uh, lower turnout overall. And it's just going to be a matter of can we turn Democrats turn out more voters than Republicans turn out. And then we have a um, Republican civil war going on in this state. Uh, it's a circular firing squad. Um, they are uh, basically throwing Kemp under the bus, our Secretary of State under the bus. The two senatorial candidates on the Republican side are um, basically undermining our, the integrity of our election systems, casting doubt on uh, whether they are, they do have integrity, saying there was widespread election fraud, taking part in the lawsuits coming out of Texas. Um, and so we had the RNC chairwoman come to Cobb County and speak before the Republicans here. And she uh, retook many questions from the audience about why should they vote if their vote doesn't count, um, if the election system is already preordained a Democratic win, why should they vote? And so for the RNC chairwoman to have to be fielding questions like that, the Republicans have a problem on their hands. Last thing, uh, Jacqueline, for anyone who watched... Uh that senatorial debate uh, with Reverend Warnock and Senator Loeffler. She began every answer by trying to basically identify her opponent as radical um, and fill in the other descriptor. How important will it be for Warnock uh, to make sure, especially to the moderate voter out there, that he is not going to, whether it be defund the police or take positions that may not play well in Georgia? 
off, uh, most of us, Warnock included, um, do not believe in defunding the police. We believe in police reform. And in the wake of uh, the George Floyd murder, um, that's a very um, real and, um, and resonant issue amongst our voters. So I always say to this idea of wanting to paint us as left-wing rad radical extremists, they're trying to do that to Warnock, really, of the pastor of historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, the home of Martin Luther King. He's carried on that tradition. Really, we're going to call him a, a radical left-wing extremist? By, mind you, the person making these accusations has aligned herself with Marjorie Taylor Greene, the congresswoman-elect in North Georgia, who subscribes to QAnon theories, right? Or these senators are um, out there, you know, there's no daylight between them and Trump. And they're undermining our democracy. They're undermining the integrity of our election systems. They want to throw out a vote and ignore the voice of the people simply because they lost. That sounds like right-wing extremists to me. So um, we just wholeheartedly um, reject this notion of being left-wing extremist radicals. Jacqueline, I appreciate the time, and I wish you folks the best of luck down there in Kaaba. Thank you again. Thank you. And now let's bring in RNN's D.C. field producer, Annie Anderson. She's on the ground in Georgia tonight. She's our eyes and ears from now to the runoffs on January 5th. And Annie, we just heard what's going on in one of the important counties in Georgia. But this isn't just about Georgia. You know, you mentioned that, uh, what is it, Hatfield Airport is usually uh, one of the busiest in the country. And there's a lot of folks from outside of Georgia coming in, trying to impact the election, right? Definitely. And, you know, this time we're getting some big names coming through, although we are in a pandemic, so a lot of those names are going to be coming in virtually. But just last night, um, the cast of Elf said that they're going to be doing a live virtual reading, and that's Will Ferrell, Zoe Deschanel. And just today, some of the people in Hamilton, so Lin-Manuel Miranda, Philippa Sue, uh, Christopher Jackson, they're going to be doing a live performance of some of the music from Hamilton. But it's not just them. Now, we're also seeing Andrew Yang, former presidential candidate. He's here on the ground doing things with his group, Win Both Votes. And just last night, Leslie Jones, SNL alum, had a virtual conversation with John Ossoff. Here's some of that conversation. I tell people all the time, I understand that the Constitution was written by some guys that wasn't like us. I get that. I get it. I just feel like we sometimes we get stuck and we don't understand that we're supposed to continue to grow. And that's what scares me about our nation, is that they, they're scared of growth. Or but here's, why, here's, here's, Leslie, why I want you to feel hopeful, is that the, the country is on that journey of progress. Mm. And we knew that it was going to be coming, but President-elect Joe Biden is also going to be coming to Georgia. His team announced that he'll be here on Tuesday in Atlanta. The everything complicated by COVID, Georgia's got a 14% positivity rate. Um, we saw during the presidential campaign, you know, Trump had the rallies, maskless crowd shoulder to shoulder. Biden took a different approach. What are you seeing on the ground? Um, you got two Senate races here. How much is COVID impacting how even the campaigning is working? You know, it is two different and distinct worlds. Um, I went to that, to President Trump's rally in Valdosta over the weekend. I didn't see a single mask there at all. So I know there were masks because there were people selling MAGA masks, Make America Great Again masks, but I didn't see anybody wearing them. Now, on the other hand, when you go to the Democratic events, even in the news release that say masks 100% required, and everybody at the event is socially distanced and wearing their masks. And you even saw today with the Cobb County Democratic chair, she wore her mask during the interview, and that is how intense things are. Annie Anderson, good job. We'll be talking to you tomorrow. Thank you. Coming up next, everybody, Donald Trump. He's been trying to overturn the election and undermine the will of the voters. We know this. But ever since the polls closed November 3rd, it turns out he's not alone. He's getting help from, of all people, state attorneys general, the people who are supposed to upholding the rule of law, not to trash or even help a bully. Once again, we are asking how low they can go. We'll discuss next.